Oh, what's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and today we're going over part two of how to get over 1,000 people out at your event. If you haven't seen the first one, just know that me and my friends did Adventure Time ATL, an event where we brought out over 100,000 people, over 1,000 people messed that up, but wishful thinking. Here, we're about to go right into some of the tips. Number one, testing. If you're actually putting out a decent amount of content, you really want to maximize the content that's working the best. But you can't really waste all of your channels if you have a few resources on pushing out all of your content everywhere. So what I did was we had our main page on Instagram and I'm releasing material, right? And as I create material and release material, I'm seeing which material works best and whatever is getting the best feedback, I will disseminate to the rest of the group and say, hey, this is the one that we're all spreading. So some material was just the main page material and it was cool, helped for the overall branding for people to come to the page and get more interest. But the best working material was the material that I chose to spread everywhere. That simple. Test to get the maximum return on investment. Number two. Now, I personally never, ever, ever condone follows for followbacks or anything like that. Uh, we'll go over that in another video. But what is so important and how it can work for an event, if you have an event and you actually create an event page and you're really creating this whole brand around a certain event, what you can do is if you follow everybody who you know, matches whatever you're doing, you want these people to come out, then if you follow them, maybe they're not gonna follow back. Do not to follow to follow back. It's not even about that. You're following them just because you want them to be aware. So when you're following all these people, they're gonna at least click on the page a lot of times and see what is this or who is this. And if it's named specifically a part of the, um, after the event and it sounds something interesting, like something interesting in this area specific, like Adventure Time ATL, people will likely at least click and you just want them to be aware. And this is no different than handing out a flyer and people seeing the information. So just make sure that your page is ready when people click before you do a follow campaign. So then when they go, they can see the dates and all that stuff clearly or what it's about clearly and they can see some already branded material content, commercials, whatever you have. Got it? Good. Number three, make the event about the people. Now, what does that mean? I know it sounds kind of like lovey-dovey, but the reality is so many people make events just for people to actually come out and see them and love them and say, hey, I got this many people out in my event. Come see my art. Come see my show. But at the end of the day, it's not about you. People love Kanye shows and people go to Kanye shows who really don't even rock with Kanye or concerts like that because they hear how interesting and entertaining they are. The same for people like Travis Scott. Well, for your event, whatever it is, even if it's just um, a performance, you want to figure out ways to stimulate people from all angles and make it as immersive as possible because when it's about the people, not you at the end of the day, you get associated with giving people the feeling that they'll remember and they'll want to go back to your events in the future, which is why this is important and I'm including in this one. This event where we got 1,000 people out was the second event, not the first event. For the second event, we had a lot of word of mouth marketing that happened naturally just because we provided such a great experience the first time around. You do that, you make it about the people and making sure they're enjoying and not just about people coming to see you, then it'll be a lot easier next time to get people out. We got, let's say like 400 people the first time, you know that 400 of those people are probably gonna at least tell other two other people if they have a great experience. Number four, cultivate curiosity and scarcity. It's an integrated tactic in sales and marketing to basically first create this curiosity through marketing. You want people to wonder what the heck it is and then you kind of create a little bit more transparency to kind of let them know what it is. But once you're doing this, you create this curiosity, but then say, hey, we only have this many tickets available. So that might be, hey, early bird, we only have this many early bird tickets. People are familiar with those kind of things, but so many people get it wrong because we say, hey, we only have five tickets left or tickets are going fast. I'm gonna go ahead and let you know most people are lying when they say that their tickets aren't going fast. And why are they lying? It's because they failed to create curiosity around their event. If you don't instill and create any kind of emotion in whoever's experiencing your marketing, then you're not gonna be able to transfer that emotion into a transaction, which will be a sale. So if you get people curious and kind of wondering about the event and then juxtapose that with 
hey, tickets are only on sale for this amount, or at least the early bird tickets are only on sale for this period of time, you start to really be able to funnel that into actual sales or people actually showing up. And there's multiple ways to continuously do that leading up into the event. Curiosity or hype or excitement, and then this artificial scarcity. Combine those two, magic. We did this in multiple ways, but I'll put up one specific example where we kind of compress this into one flyer. And other than that, go ahead and share this if you know somebody who you think might be helpful with your team or whoever, and you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.